Under 18s are the biggest audience on YouTube. My favourite YouTuber is a gamer called Dan TDM. I like like animal videos. Mr Beast. And parents in schools now rely on it as a tool to access great science content. But there's a new type of content creator using artificial intelligence to create videos full of false information. That never existed. This never happened to him. This woman doesn't exist. Those conversations didn't happen. Our research shows that these creators take advantage of kids' clicks to cash in while spreading misinformation to classrooms around the world. And the kids seem to be buying it. I find it really interesting that parents can make electricity. Bad science videos are flooding YouTube, optimised for the algorithm with catchy titles and controversial topics. Imagine being told that the world you live in is not real. Full of pseudoscience and false information. Unpredictable patterns of highs and lows that might not be directly correlated with the effects of human activities and greenhouse gas emissions. Creators are tagging these videos as educational content. And they're often beating legitimate science videos in the race to be recommended. These videos do well because they, they are potentially in some way maybe conspiratorial. Um, you know, we, we're all fascinated by, you know, things that run counter to what we're officially told. And, and children obviously maybe are more susceptible perhaps to this than adults. We wanted to see if these videos were reaching children. So we created an experiment. We set up four children's accounts on YouTube. Each account watched 50 science videos from legitimate creators. After only four days, one of the bad science channels cropped up in the recommended videos. Once we clicked these videos, they flooded our recommended feed. And it's in every corner of the globe, with channels translating the videos into more than 20 languages. But would kids in the real world believe what they were seeing? We showed two examples of bad science videos to two groups of children, one in the UK and one in Thailand. No one knows when they were built, how they were built, who built them, and most importantly, why were they built? With the right amount of pressure, the Great Pyramid could generate a tremendous amount of electricity. I find it really interesting that pyramids can make electricity. Pyramid power plants were and are possible. I was quite surprised to find out it's just a pile of rocks can form electricity. <laughs> I thought it was really cool because I like love aliens and stuff like that. The only thing missing for the Great Pyramid of Giza to function as a power plant was a source of energy. I didn't know that people so long ago would be able to make electricity and use modern technology. Due to the recent surge in sighting reports from all around the world, the UFO community endured a period of extreme heat. <laughs> The objects are said to be of exotic origin or non-human intelligence, whether alien or ancient in origin. The person who was talking sounded like very professional and knew what he was talking about. We found more than 50 channels creating these bad science videos, and they are getting hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of views. But how are they multiplying so fast? We found out that these channels are being created using artificial intelligence. A video needs a script, and with AI, it can be generated in seconds. Then it needs a voice. It no longer needs to be human. It's not quite there yet, but eventually we won't be able to tell the difference. Then AI can find footage from across the internet, taking from different sources and piece together the final film. Some footage and graphics have been stolen from legitimate educational creators and repurposed into false information. Kyle Hill, a science communication specialist, educator and YouTuber, began to notice these videos cropping up in his feed a couple of months ago. So being a YouTube creator, I always try to have my ear to the ground for what other science and technology related channels are doing. But it wasn't until one of my viewers actually pointed out that it looked like a lot of the channels they were getting recommended after watching my videos started looking very the same. And these videos do all look really similar. 
The logos look alike, the same subjects, and near identical thumbnails. And they're full of false information, like this. Weather patterns have seen some remarkable changes in the past decades, something which many might attribute to climate change, but these changes might not be caused by climate change at all. Once the footage is taken, the AI channels change or even ignore the original meaning. Here, they took old footage from a NASA expert's video. They took out his voice and replaced it with AI narration, saying climate change isn't caused by humans, which isn't in the original. Here, they've taken a James Webb telescope animation from a legitimate science creator. The AI video used it to say scientists are covering up that the telescope disproved the Big Bang Theory, which it never did. These channels seem to have identified the exact right thing and how to do that thing to maximize views with the least amount of actual effort. And more views equals more money through advertising revenue, with channels often getting thousands of pounds per video. With new AI tools, anyone can create channels in a matter of hours, and there's hundreds of tutorials on YouTube. So, you want to make money with AI and YouTube? I created this faceless YouTube channel using only AI to script, edit, and create a faceless YouTube channel. With each video getting tens of thousands of views, these channels can mean massive payouts for creators. And creators aren't the only ones profiting. YouTube takes nearly half of advertising revenue from every video. The idea that YouTube and Google making money off the back of adverts being served against pseudoscience, AI-generated news, that's really, you know, that seems really unethical to me. That video was actually all fake. I'm actually really confused. I thought that was 100% real. I would have probably believed it if you hadn't told us it was fake. I mean, I think I did believe it until a few minutes ago. I'm just shocked. I think children will often take what they've seen as fact, first and foremostly. And then maybe when they're a little older, start to question it. But it's not, it's not your starting point. If you're watching something educational, you're watching it so that you learn. And we don't question, do we? It's not, just not in our wiring to do that. So that's why it's so, such a concern. เอ่อคุณครูก็เห็นหลายๆคนบางทีก็เอาข่าวสารเข้ามาผิดๆบ้างรับเข้ามาผิดๆแล้วก็เอามาคุยกันในโรงเรียนอันนี้บางทีเพ